Puccine, moonshine. Moonshine, puccine. Puccine. Same, same, right? Or not. So what's the deal? You know the rundown. A bit of history incoming, I think. Let's get all technical and stuff. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian here in Christie's Bar, Kilkenny. Hope you keep them well. So for the purpose of this video, when I refer to moonshine, I'm referring to it as what they call illegal distilled spirits in the USA, not any other country. Moonshine, of course, is a generic term for a distilled spirit that has been generally made illegally or a spirit that is heavily regulated in a specific country. In the USA, it is known as moonshine. In Ireland, it's referred to as pochin or pochin. Cuba, it's gualfarina. Poland, it's bimber. Albania, it's raki. The point here is simple. The name differs from country to country, and more importantly, its ingredients reflects the customs, tastes, and raw materials for fermentation available in each region. So, while the word moonshine may be generic, its composition varies greatly from region to region. So they are same, same, but different. Now, Pochin happens to be the Irish version of moonshine, or a more politically correct way of saying it is moonshine is the American version of Pochin. Kind of. Now, this all does get a little heavy the further you go down the rabbit hole. So for the sake of time and not boring the death out of you, we're gonna condense this down, some of the info, and give you a basic raw overview in a condensed, condensed version. Now, while pochine and moonshine are often interchangeable terms in ways of defining an illegal spirit, they both have different origins and histories. What they do share in common is a violent past, a way of life that was cast out to the backwoods and mountains of their hometowns, and laws and taxes unfairly imposed on a practice that earned them a living when earning a living was nearly impossible. Now, for the sake of this comparison, it makes most sense to start with Pachin. That's only because we had a name on it before it went across to America and became moonshine. See, it wasn't always known as Pachin in Ireland. It was commonly referred to as Aquavite and later Ishkabaha. The latter became what we call whiskey in its legal form and Puccin in its illicit or illegal form. Now, Ishkabaha and Puccin was a white spirit made from malted grains dried over a rudimentary peat-fired kiln. For hundreds of years, the spirit was distilled by local farmers, growers, innkeepers, estate houses, and traded as openly as bread and grains. In fact, it was a way of life and a way to pay rent on the land that belonged to the lords of the time. Where people often get confused about the illegalization of Puccin falls on the dates that excise was imposed on distillers in Ireland. We often consider the excise tax of 1661, which taxed the making of whiskey on a large scale as the introduction of illegal Puccin. As this is somewhat correct, it's a little bit more complicated than that, naturally. Now, by 1661, the sale of Pochin or whiskey was already regulated, but the making wasn't exactly. The implementation of that tax is also a little loose when it comes to, would say, still sizes. As a 12 liter still was still legal to operate and didn't require any duties being paid. That and the fact that private distilling was still allowed. Couple that along with landlords who obviously wanted to get paid their rent and farmers that could only pay rent by distilling Pochin the law was somewhat widely disregarded. And it wasn't until the ban on private distilling in 1760 that Puccin really became an illegal and outlawed practice here in Ireland. Historically speaking, Ireland wouldn't have been very good at keeping that many records. I mean, there was at the time a tremendous amount of illiteracy and it was an extremely poor and impoverished country. So keeping records wasn't really that much of a thing. I say this because early mash bills or evidence of early types of mash bills for Puccin aren't really that easy to come by. However, there is evidence out there that supports the fact that the Irish did incorporate barley, oats, treacle, corn, potatoes, and molasses. However, 
there is apparently very little evidence of a lot of potatoes being used for distillation of pochine, despite the rumors that surround its use. Now, by the time the Puccine Wars rolled around in the last part of the 18th century, legal whiskey only accounted for a fifth of, a spir of the spirit that was consumed in the northwest of Ireland. Puccine was more popular than whiskey and stout, and the murder, blackmail, and scores that were settled gave way to a very dark time and a thriving black market. County Donegal, up in the northwest of Ireland, was regarded as the most popular county for illegal Puccine, while the Inish Owen Peninsula became so infamous for the quality and amount of Puccine distilled that it was smuggled out to Scotland and London, England. It was traded at times as openly as bread. Now, a little bit of a side note and an, a pretty interesting fact is in 1816, County Donegal boasts the most illicit still seizures in all of Ireland with a whopping 531 stills being seized. Compare that to the next closest county of Tyrone with 151 still seizures, Compare it again to Dublin with a whopping zero still seizures. But that story is for another day. So moonshine then. Very similar in its history, its makeup, the turmoil behind it, but again different. I mean, it's America. It of course has its own wonderful backstory that is filled with crime, mystery, murder, even an uprising and subsequent change in tax laws because of it. A common misconception about moonshine is that it came about because of prohibition in America in the 1920s, which was the passing of the Volstead Act following the ratification of the 18th Amendment. When in all actuality, this was when moonshine was at its most popular. The term moonshine itself is said to have been around since the late 15th century, but was first used to refer to liquor in the 18th century in England. Contrary to belief, moonshine or the practice of creating homebrew distillation came over to the USA from both Ireland and Scotland around the early 18th century. Settlers leaving Europe would have come across to the USA and brought their stills with them and began distilling in and around the kind of Appalachian Mountains, which we kind of know as Pennsylvania today. Uh, that's kind of a rough generalization. When we say Appalachia, which is kind of the real frontier land back at that time. In all reality, home distilling was absolutely everywhere, not just Appalachia or down south. It was everywhere, and it wasn't illegal. In 1791, the federal government in the USA imposed a tax on liquor made in the country, known as the whiskey tax. For the next three years, distill distillers held off the tax collectors by less than legal means, which brought a US marshal to Pennsylvania to collect the taxes owed. More than 500 men attacked the area's tax inspector general's homes. Their commander was killed, which inspired a protest of nearly 6,000 people. The tax was eventually repealed in 1801, and the events from that decade prior came to be known as the Whiskey Rebellion. There is a lot more information on that topic online. That's just a very brief bit of information there, very brief. During the Civil War in America from 1861 to 1865, the American government once again imposed taxes on its citizens to fund the war. Revenuers and IRS officials cracked down harshly on moonshiners, leading to many violent conflicts throughout the country. During the Whiskey Rebellion, moonshiners were portrayed as heroes standing against the oppressive government. After the Civil War though, that attitude shifted. Many now saw moonshiners as violent criminals. So back to 1920 and the introduction of Prohibition exploded moonshine in popularity. One of the main reasons is because moonshine is a higher alcohol content than beer or wine and is comparatively cheaper and a more convenient way for people to get a drink when liquor was illegal. The Prohibition age was key in bringing moonshine into the public's imagination and exposing more people to it. After the 21st Amendment that was passed in the 1930s, repealing the 18th Amendment and putting an end to Prohibition, Moonshine declined in popularity, popularity as people regained easy access to more traditional kinds of alcohol like beer and some wines and gins and vodkas. Now back then, moonshine was distilled from various different surplus crops and ingredients. There was like rye, corn, sugar, and yeast. Earlier evidence suggests fermented fruit and some barley. Not too dissimilar to what Puccine was distilled from, but then again, not the same either. There was, of course, that period of time in the 1920s where moonshine was incredibly dangerous and killed or may blind a lot of people. And this was mainly down to the distiller's inexperience and trying to cut corners to get the product out faster. 
Two interesting facts behind Moonshine. Most people know this, but it's still interesting. It was the start and formation of what we call NASCAR racing today. Originally came from Moonshine runners and their souped up cars they used to smuggle. And the other was the term bootleggers. The latter term more appropriate to early 18th century. Smugglers that would sell alcohol to Native Americans, which was prohibited at the time. The term bootlegger originates from these smugglers as they would hide flasks containing alcohol in the top of their boots. There's a good one for you. As moonshine became more popular, it joined whiskey and gin as a spirit of choice for bootleggers to sell illegally to Native Americans. Before we finish up, and if you liked any of that information uh, behind the moonshine and Puccine, be sure to subscribe to the channel and have your notifications turned on because that turns me on. So finally, in today's world and current times, we see branded moonshine from the States for sale and branded Puccine in Ireland for sale. But producing either in your own home or under the radar of tax and excise people is still very much legal. Now, in the United States, if you own and operate a still with the proper permits and you've gone through the red tape to get the proper permits, it is legal to bottle and sell moonshine. Technically speaking though, is this real moonshine? as moonshine is defined as any distilled spirit made illegally. People who regulate these things at both state and federal levels allow producers to call their products moonshine as long as the product is also identified by its actual official classification. The very same thing can be said for Pachin. How can we call it Pachin if Pachin has always been referred to the distillation of illicit spirits? And that's not taking anything away from anyone here at home that creates legal Pachin as I've had a fair whack of it and some of it is pretty out of this world. There are some serious distilleries doing great things currently with the spirit. In 2008, Irish Pachin was accorded geographical indicative status by the EU Council and Parliament. Following that, in 2015, the Irish government adopted the GI technical file for Pachin, which outlined the production methods that uh, must be used in order for a spirit to be called Irish Pachin. For your information, geographical indicative status or GI status is just a name or a sign used on a product which corresponds to a specific ge geographical location or origin. For example, Irish Pachin or Irish Whiskey. Irish Whiskey has a GI status. It just means for it to be called Irish Whiskey or indeed Irish Pachin, it must be made on the island of Ireland and adhere to certain rules and regulations. I'm not exactly sure what the same thing would be for Moonshine. If you have a link to anything like that, leave it below with your comment because I like to nerd out every once in a while and uh, read some technical files. It's a true story. That's kind of what I do. I'll leave a link for the Irish Pachin technical file below for anyone who wants to check it out. Now, I feel like I should do a second disclaimer here. There is so much information behind both of these spirits and there is literally only so much you can try and cram into a 10 or 15 minute YouTube video. I tried to select the most important dates possible and condense where I could to try and get the story across, but there is literally tons of info out there. A quick YouTube or Google search if you're looking for more information will turn up tons of information. Now, I will put it to you, all of you lovely watchers before I sign off. Have you had Irish Puccine or Moonshine? Did you like it? Did it rock your senses? Leave a comment below with your story. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, well that's it for me this week. All that info has made me incredibly thirsty. So I'm gonna go get a dram. I'll talk to you all soon. Whiskey Chaser, out. Sláinte.